This whole universe has two dimensions. One is materialistic and the other is spiritual. We are not bodies in which the soul exists, but we are souls which have a body. This soul is the foundation of the universe. There are some things in the world to which science does not have any answers. Science has detected that there are many atoms millions of miles away in space which are influenced by the thought waves generated by human beings. We don't know why these atoms behave in such a way. Now science is trying to tell you about the truth which is called spirituality. Spirituality kya hai dost? What do you mean by spirituality? It is a science which is still the human being is not understood, is trying to understand. It is ultimately finding peace within yourself. Spirituality it deals with the spirit. I just know one thing. Become a good human being or else you'll become a devil. Spirituality is what? Getting the right values and the right attitudes ultimately. Spirituality is a direct blessing from God. To love, to give and to serve. To generate happiness in someone's heart, to make someone happy, this is the best charity. This is what spirituality is. Science and spirituality are two sides of the same coin. Spirituality and science are no two different things. They are not separate. Spirituality is also a science actually. See, mere science without spirituality will only create monsters. Last century alone, millions of people have been killed by wars fought in the name of defending peace, religion and God. No God, no religion says you have to kill others to preserve their religions. Richer the country, they live in more fear, greater fear. In these days, you know, this violence and this minor conflict in wars can lead to a possibility of nuclear weapons being used by someone or the other. Some madcap can always press the wrong button, which means, you know, there's destruction of lakhs and lakhs of people and uh, the amount of weapons, nuclear weapons that are available can destroy the whole mankind, all life forms on the planet many times over. But why these adverse situations? How can we escape from these situations? Will the existing time change? Who can change time? Is it you and me or someone else? Possible, impossible. Practicable, impracticable. Can be done, cannot be done. One person cannot do it. One person can never do it. I don't think so. It's not one's cup of tea. You cannot change by one person. No, everybody has to pitch in and do it together. Cannot change. Can't change it. It's not possible for one person to change it. Because it's too complex. It 
can never happen. It is not in the capacity of one person. Impracticable. One person can't change the situation of the entire world. Some believe that there is nothing one man or one woman can do against the enormous array of the world's ills, against misery, against ignorance and injustice and violence. There are weaknesses in everyone. There are two sides to everything. Half are good, the other half bad. No matter how thin the coin is, there are two sides for it as well. Yet many of the world's greatest events, the world's greatest movements of thoughts and actions, have flowed from the work of a single individual. A young monk began the Protestant Reformation. And it was a young woman who reclaimed the territory of France. It was a loincloth clad Gandhi who brought the British Empire to its knees. While a brave man named Mandela led the chains that broke the shackles of apartheid. Give me a place to stand, said Archimedes, and I will move the world. Throughout history, there have existed men and women who've literally shaped and moved our world, who have charted new directions for human development. The 21st century was one that brought a massive change on Earth. The technological speed of change accelerated very fast, making the world a smaller place to live in. We continue to witness the breakdown of governments, large organizations and social structures. More than ever before, there is a need for a new way of leading. A leadership that is exemplary, that is based on strong values and elevated principles. The new paradigm that will transport us into a brighter future is the servant leader. A person who combines with such ease, humility, authority, love, and determination. First sight, Dari Prakashmani, fondly known as Dadiji, is the most unlikely of leaders. Yet in her presence, great things happen. Her title is administrative head of the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual Organization, but she is much more than that. Daddy has no hidden agenda, no personal motive, and so really she's an instrument. And she'll never say, I'm a leader or I'm the head of the organization. She'll always feel she's an instrument and it's God who's directing everything. And so when somebody is completely detached and has no motive for the self at all, then the touchings that come from above are very clearly received. And so when Daddy gives instructions, then it's not her mind that's speaking. Really, she's a channel for the divine. A global organization committed to helping individuals change their lives.
this sweet individual, Dadi Prakashmani, has shown us a new way of living and a new way of being. I would like to give this message to the whole nation and to the whole world. If each one truly remembers this mantra of love, purity, peace and happiness, that is, have love, have peace, have purity, and you will experience immense happiness. There is no nourishment like that of happiness. Be happy and make others happy. Happiness is the greatest gift in life. Be happy, be prosperous. Her invitation to all of us is to rediscover the peace and power inside us. Your stature, so near and dear to my heart. Dadichi, I wish you a very, very long and healthy life. When you call us your friends, it moves us very deeply. And we have the question, well, how can we give you the return of what you have given us with such love? And I know that the real return is that just as you are so continually close to God, I have to be the same. <laughs>